What's good, Joe? Welcome to my review for the Royal Rumble this year. Sorry, this review took a little while. I had, to, had some uh, profit, having some problems with the like, computer and everything. Oh, my laptop has been giving me so many problems. Hopefully, oh, man, hopefully this will pass. And I'll be back to the that's why you, that's why the JoJo hasn't come out and a lot of the reviews have been delayed, man, because it's my fucking laptop. Anyway, anyway, so, what did I think of overall the show? Overall, the Rumble this year was actually really fucking good. Like, yo, I will definitely agree with a lot of people saying this is the best Rumble we've gotten in some time. Like, the card was overall really good. I mean, there was, I mean, there was that Lacey Evans match, which was... It was fine. I mean, I don't. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. It was fine for what it was. The Rumble matches themselves were great. Not a big fan of the end of the women's match, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But yeah, man, let's just jump right in. We'll go by match by match, tell you guys what I thought of it, and we'll go from there. So, start, and I, in case you guys wonder, I did watch the pre-show. Thought the matches were, eh, fine. Pretty good, slash fine. So, first match on the call was Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin. False count anywhere match. Now, I don't know. Now, I think I mentioned this before, but I do not give two flying fucks about this storyline, man. Like, this shit is just fucking garbage. Like, I, 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 like, I just don't care, man. Baron Corbin, to me, has go away heat. I don't like the guy. He, like, Baron Corbin is good on the mic. He's a decent heel, but... Fuck me, man. The way they've been booking him, man. It's just like, Jesus Christ. Get off my goddamn TV. Like, bruh. Don't like Baron Corbin. You guys know my pins of Roman Reigns. I think he's fine. Uh, but yeah, man. This match overall was actually really good. A lot better than I expected. Uh, but the false count anywhere thing, you had a lot of cool spots. Like, um... Uh, there was some, like, there was, of course, a porty potty spot, which, where, um, Roman Reigns throws him, throws Baron Corbin in a porty potty. Man, I must, that's some amazing symbols for this feud. Absolute shit. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, that was great. You had the Usos coming in later on, around the end of the match, and Jimmy, I, I believe it was Jimmy, did like a, did like a, like a, like a, uh, like a cross body off of like some of the, uh, on some of the equipment. It looked really cool. It looked really cool. Um... And I really dig, and I and also one thing I gotta say, I love, I love the look of these baseball stadiums for the Rumble for the past couple of years. They also did this one, uh, they also used another baseball stadium for last year's Rumble. And I would love for this to just stay as like, uh, as like a thing for the Rumble for the next couple of years, where they just go and just use baseball stadiums. Because I think it looks really, really cool. The look of the Rumble looks great, you know, it's big, this is the Royal Rumble, and I think it really fits. I wouldn't mind if they, if they keep using baseball stadiums for some time. And I hope they do that, because I love the look of these stadiums. I love the look of them. Love them. And I like that the that the Ram was extra straight this time and like last year it was kinda curved. Which yeah, I bet it made it better easier for the wrestlers so they can just sprint right to the back three instead of having to like maybe jog or hope to God that they have like get out type quickness where they can easily jolt or uh, you know, uh, turn over to the right and keep their momentum without or without either slipping or just running right into the railing. So yeah. Um match itself was pretty good. But, you know, it was a lot better than I expected. It ended with a Roman Reigns giving him a spear on top of the dugout, which looked fine. And, yeah, man. Like, I like I always liked the way that the crowd was kind of, like, moving around, trying to get in the action. And it looked, you know, the crowd and everything, it looked pretty good. So, the match itself was really good and a lot better than I expected. So, next up, we have the Women's Royal Rumble. Now, obviously, guys, I'm not going to come out here and tell you, like, oh, this person came out this number or this number. I'm gonna give you guys what I thought of the rumble, give you guys a handful of numbers, tell you what I thought, because I honestly could not, could not, can't remember all everything that happened. So, uh, first off, sh okay, we'll talk about the the ending and who won the rumble in a second. I gotta first give major props to Bianca Belair and WWE Creative, because Bianca Belair, she came out at number two, and Alexa Bliss was number one, which I find that kind of funny and kind of ironic. You have a bitch that couldn't wrestle her way out of a paper bag versus one of the best females WWE has currently in NXT and Bianca Belair. Kind of funny, and apparently she was dressed up as Bret Hart. I honestly find that I would only follow Bret Hart, I actually take that as an insult, if you ask me, because <laughs> this bitch can't wrestle. So yeah, Bianca had an amazing show, and she lasted, like, what, 30-some-odd minutes, and eliminated seven women, or might have been eight, eight or seven women, which I think that's actually Ty's Kane's record he had, like, I think he had, like, eight or seven or eight eliminations, too, then, so, yeah, yeah, yeah I think it was that, and then Roman took care of it, 2014 with 12, and then Bear, and then, uh, Braun Strowman apparently breathed that, the greatest Royal Rumble, which, by the way, that shit doesn't count, 
The Royal Rumble's in January, not in fucking Saudi Arabia. Please, WWE, don't give me don't give me your bullshit about the greatest Royal Rumble. But I digress. So you have Bianca Belair. She had an amazing showing. Lasted thirty some odd minutes. Got seven eliminations. Got eight, or uh, I believe it was eight. It might have been. It was seven or eight. She got seven or eight eliminations, and she just looked fucking fantastic. I also like she was rocking NXT colors, black and yellow. Uh, hell yeah. So yeah, man. Uh, she looked great. Alexa Bliss couldn't give you, couldn't care less. Although I won't lie. That smile she gave off when Nikki Cross came in was kind of hot. Although, granted, Alexa Bliss's mouth is all she's good for in more ways than one. <laughs> I wonder how many Alexa Bliss stands I triggered with that. Man, I love talking about wrestling. <laughs> but yeah, so Bianca Belair had an amazing showing. Uh, Tony Storm was in there as well. Uh, we had a lot, actually, at his We had um, Bianca Belair, Tony Storm, Mia Yim, Zia Lee. Chelsea Green, uh, Damien Perazzo, I think the chick's name is the one that has Cain Vel or the one that Cain Velasquez scoot stole for his entrance. I forget. I think it was. I think that's her name. Um, uh, uh, no, no, Chelsea Green is the. I think no, no. Ch <sighs> sorry, I can't remember all of their names. There was also the green chick that eliminated. I forget. I, I'm sorry. I forget half of their names. I'm terrible names. There was also the chick with the green hair that eliminated uh, Shayna Baszler. At the uh, Brattle Royal a couple weeks back, to cut my girl Dakota, uh, Dakota Kai came in there. Hell yeah. Tegan Knox came in there rocking Captain Marvel gear again. Oh, this time she wasn't really rocking. I mean, she was rocking Captain Marvel gear. It was still the same design as she used as. But the colors were nothing we see in the comics or in the movies as far as I know. It was actually red and, and gold, which are Iron Man colors. Kind of ironic if you read the comics and with that. But yeah, no. So yeah, that was that was I I popped big before I saw Tegan Knox. He was rocking uh, Captain Marvel. I always love when Tegan comes out with that. Another person who wore Captain Marvel colors as well that honestly kind of pissed me off and offended me. Honestly, you guys know how hard it is to offend me. But Lana came out wearing Captain Marvel. Really? Hasn't Carol suffered enough? Now you have to associate with this garbage storyline with her and Bobby Lashley and Rusev. <laughs> Can Carol not catch a break like fuck me? Get keep her out of this goddamn storyline, bro. Like, ugh. I, I was legit a little pissed off, and I was like, oh come on, like come on, you couldn't come out as Wonder Woman or something like ruin other females. Or you had to pick Carol. You had to pick Carol. Come on, has she not suffered enough? Anyway, I digress. That kind of low key kind of pissed me off, man. A little, a little, and offended me because I'm like, really, you got just my girl Carol like that, really? Really, um, uh, uh, Candice LeRae also made an appearance. She did really good. Um, Kelly Kelly was in there too, which, look, okay, you guys know me when it comes to women's wrestling. I've really gone to appreciate it recently with Paige, AJ Lee, you know, the Four Horsemen, what they've done the main roster, and of course, all the great work from girls like Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, Shayna Baszler in NXT. But, I, and you guys know how much I hate the blonde agenda with like bitches like Carmella, Alexa, but you guys know back in 2017, Carmella was my Roman Reign, man. Like, whew, man, I hate her. Ah. Uh, so you guys saw my in my match tracks back when I was doing those. But I won't lie, I had a massive smile on my face when Kelly Kelly came out. I kind of popped a little bit for her. Because listen, Kelly Kelly was my favorite growing up until AJ Lee came around, of course. And, you know, just seeing her again, man, I always pop for that, man, you know. Am I, am I blinded by nostalgia? Yeah, a little bit. She wasn't actually half, that half bad, if I remember correctly from my memory. She wasn't actually half, that half bad in the ring, at least at least relatively speaking with what you expect from the rest of those divas. She wasn't that bad. I mean, she's not on the same level as where the women are now, but back then, she was pretty good. As far as I remember, maybe my memory just shit. I don't know. But, yeah, man. Uh, she came out, a um, bunch of others. Um, I did like Bianca when she went. Uh, Tamina came in there. Bianca legit lifted her Tamina off and eliminated her. That was cool. Uh, now, you guys know, now one thing I do love about the Royal Rumble, especially recently, is the, oh, he almost the almost got eliminated spots where someone gets eliminated, but they manage to save themselves, and they manage to find a way back into the ring. I love those spots uh, from Kofi Kingston, from all the crazy stuff he did, you know, from um, the handstand, um... I believe you, uh, what else did he use? Uh, but when he came out, you know, you lay on top of the Rosebud back in like 2014 when Adam Rose was still there, and he got that, got him back in the ring. Uh, what was another one? What was the other? What's another one of Kofi's spots? Uh, the handstand. 
I think either him or John. Uh, I think he was the one that used the one of the announcer tri- chairs as like a pogo stick back in three. It was either him or John Morris. I forget which one it was. But yeah, um, what else? Uh, there was one when Naomi used the computer chair to lead, get herself back in there. And there's probably some other ones that I'm forgetting. But yeah, I love these spots. Uh, we got them in the women's Royal room, but we didn't get them in the men, which kind of disappointing. Especially from Kofi and John Morris, they did not get their spots, which is weird, because they usually do. But uh, with the way the men's Royal room was built, was booked, I can understand why they didn't get their spots. But hey, I got in the women's, so I'm good. So anyway, uh, Mandy Rose got in the ring, she got eliminated, but then she doesn't get, actually get eliminated. She goes on top rope and falls down, but Otis manages to like be like right there, and she just lands right on top of him, and she like just stands up on top of him, while Otis is just like... Oh, yeah, get him, baby. You know, I love, man, I love it. I was like, this Mandy Rose storyline with Otis has actually been really good. I've enjoyed it. It's a lot better than that honest shit because, well, you actually care about Otis. You like, you actually care about Mandy Rose. I mean, I'm kind of indifferent to Mandy Rose, but hey, I'm starting to like it just because of the storyline. And I love Otis, man. Who doesn't love Otis, man? So, you know, Otis came in there with the same, man. Everyone was losing their shit in the crowd, which is fun to see. Everyone was like, yeah. So, you had that one. Um, there was another one with Naomi when she came, which I gotta say, First off, I'm glad to see my girl Naomi back. I love me some Naomi, but my God, her hair, man. Like, now, you guys know me. I rock an afro myself, but yo, Naomi, Jesus Christ, man. Her afro is fucking huge. Like, I'm not dissing her or anything, man, but I'm just saying, like, my God, that afro must be a pain in the ass to man. It's like, when my hair starts getting, like, really long, I, I just need, I'm like, ugh. It's too much for what, like, you know, where I usually have it. It's, I mean, that's where I'm like, oh, but I couldn't imagine trying to have an afro that big, man. She, I tell you, props to Naomi. I like the hair stuff, but she actually also had another one of the spots where, um, she almost got eliminated, but she actually kind of copied John Morrison actually a little bit, where she jumped, where she gets eliminated, but she manages to la- the manages to grab on the barricade, gets on top of there, um, kind of like scoots her way back up to the announcement. She probably just sticks there for a for the like the later half of the match until she like takes one of the um takes one of like the top parts of the announce table that had, like the logo on the Royal Rumble. She used it and put it and put it down as like a bridge between that and the steel steps and just walked over there and got back into the ring. She ended up getting eliminated like five or six seconds later, so it's kinda of a little bit anticlimactic, but hey, it's still cool. I always love those spots. Um what else? Um, you know, Liv Morgan came out to she eliminated Lana and then Lana got her out, then they just start fighting, which uh, but I gotta say, yo yo man. Liv Morgan is fucking hot, man. <laughs> like, yo. Liv Morgan is fucking hot. I never really noticed it until, until she recently came back, man. I never noticed it back when she was with the Ross Bar. But now she's on her own, man. Bro, she fucking hot. Like, yo. And that outfit she was wearing at the Royal Rumble. Good shit. I think I, think I saw some of like World Color things that she was uh, that she was dressed up as like Black Cat. I mean, you yeah, can kind of see it, but I doubt it. But, yeah, man, like, Liv Morgan, she was, I mean, I could care less about that Lana storyline, just get off my goddamn TV, please, but, yeah, uh, one other thing I gotta mention, uh, Tony Storm was also in the match, and Kelly Kelly, actually, Kelly Kelly took something from her keys, because I don't think she actually ever used this move when, in her run, I might be wrong, but I feel like I will have remembered if she actually done this, but I don't know, she's like, Tony Storm is, is on, like, is on the bomb turnbuckle, she's just kind of sitting there, Kelly Kelly kind of, like, shakes her ass a little bit before she just ru- rubs her ass against Tony Storm, but, like, le- legit, like, Rikishi, now, me, personally, I would have had the roles of us, I mean, have you seen Tony Storm, man, like, yo, know. <laughs> but, bro, but anyway, man, so, I would have had the roles of her, but that's just me, but anyway, uh, Beth Phoenix was also in the Rumble, which I actually jokingly said, Oh, Beth Phoenix is here, Edge confirmed, on Twitter. So, you had her, and then Santino Morella came out as, uh, as, like, you know, his, like, female version, which you get, which, my, did anyone else get, uh, WrestleMania 25 flashbacks? I know I did. And the look of Beth Phoenix, I bet she was getting some PTSD flashbacks from that Mrs. Royal, Mrs. WrestleMania Battle Royal at the, uh, WrestleMania 25, which Santino actually won that one. <laughs> I love me some Santina Morella, man. She, the look on her face, man, was absolutely priceless. So anyway, she goes in. So anyway, Santino comes in there. He ends up getting cornered by her and Natalia. He pulls out the crow, and they're just like, oh, yeah, come on here. But he just hits himself and just eliminates himself, which I just thought was really funny. But anyway, let's talk about the ending. So Charlotte comes in there. She does her thing. I'm pretty sure she actually was actually the one that eliminated Bianca, although I could be wrong on that. Uh, but she comes in there, does her thing, and then at number 30 was, of course, Shayna Baszler. You know, and I was like, yeah, let's go, Shayna, let's go! Let's go, Shayna. And 
So she does, so she eliminates a couple guys. She eliminates, she actually, she also had like seven eliminations as well. Uh, but then, around the end of the match, it's pretty much just her and Sa and Shaw, which I was like, yeah, man, this is going to be awesome. But, yeah, and then, so, while, uh, while, um, uh, Shayna is really, is trying to get rid of Natty, or, I, no, 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 it was Beth Phoenix. Uh, Charlotte comes in from high and eliminates them both. So, yeah, Charlotte wins the theme, Women's Royal Rumble. Now, when, when, now, some of you might be wondering, Glenn, why was this? Why did she win the Rumble and not Shayna? Well, because everyone was saying Shayna won the Rumble, and because Vince is on his, oh, fuck the fans bullshit again, he was like, oh, yeah, let's, let's tell those damn marks that they know no shit. So let's have Charlotte win the Rumble. It's such good shit. That's why ha that's why it happened. Because no way now I'm not gonna come here and J like JD come off on some big massive rant because I like Charlotte. Now do I like the way she has been booked? No. I think her constantly being in title matches, winning titles is unnecessary and the need to you know focus on somebody else instead of you know, always going to Charlotte. Charlotte this, Charlotte that, Charlotte this, Charlotte that. But you know, I don't mind at the same time because I've been for I like Shaw. She is great in the ring. She's a great promo when she's a heel. I mean, she's always usually going to the mic, but when she's a heel, she's definitely a lot better. Even though sometimes she sounds like an android. I am Charlotte Flair. <laughs> yeah. I had to throw it in there somewhere. But anyway. Yeah, I like Charlotte. She's pretty good. But, yeah, man. It should have been Shayna. It should have been Shayna. We should have gotten her and, Sh and uh, Becky at WrestleMania. Now, Grant, we could still get that. Because Becky is still champion and Charlotte could go with Bailey. I mean, I don't think. I mean, neither one of the matches I really want to see, unless maybe during the Elimination Chamber, Ronda is and Ronda comes in there and she wins the ma and she wins the um, the Raw Women's Title, and then we get Ronda versus Charlotte one on one at WrestleMania, which was the original plan for WrestleMania 36. We could get that, or we could have some shit where she ends up going with Bailey. Or maybe something happens and then Shayna gets the, where, where um, Charlotte puts her WrestleMania match on the line and Shayna wins. They could do that. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, who she's going to pick. But either way, man, I'm not a big fan of it. It should have been Shayna, but that's just me. So, let's move on. Next up was the uh, Bailey match. Next up was Bailey versus Leah, Lacey Evans. This match, like I mentioned before, was fine. Like, nothing happened except in the end where um, Bailey throws uh, Lacey into the barricade and then her daughter like, kind of grabs her and then, like, her and Bailey kind of, like, start pulling. She starts pulling while her daughter's still holding her mom. That's, like, the only thing that really exciting happened in this match. It was fine. Like, Lacey Evans, I don't like her. She was pretty good as a heel as a baby face, not so much. She's not that good in the ring. And Bailey deserves so much better than this shit, so, yeah. It was fine for what it was, but nothing really that awesome or miraculous or really noteworthy. So let's move on. Next up was the D. Bryan Strat match. This match was fucking awesome. Now, was this better than their match that they had back in 2014, the Rumble? I honestly couldn't answer that question because I don't even really remember that match. <laughs> Not to say it was bad. It's just my memory is just kind of shit. So, this match was awesome. A lot of great stuff from the feed. We had natural lighting again. So, you know, all of you guys that are complaining about the red lighting, how are, you know, it's not Now, me first, I never really mind the red light. Do I prefer natural light? Absolutely. But I would never really minded the red lighting. But that's just me. So, yeah. Um, what else? I am. Like, there was a lot of stuff where, like, you know, the Fiend would constantly whip D. Bryan with, you know, the with the, with the strap. There were those times where, like, there was also, there was a lot of cool spots. Like, there was this one where D. Bryan did, like, a suicide dive, but then, uh, but then, uh, did a suicide dive, but Bray managed to, like, catch him and, like, throw him into the barricade while in midair. There was another really cool other midair spot where midair countered from the Fiend that was also really cool around the end of the match. Um, of course, D. Bryan would have his, uh, few moments of offense where, like, he would get, like, the run me or you know he would stop whip, start whipping the fiend with the with the strap those were always really cool you know i was always like oh come on let's go d you know the crowd was into there i was like Let, let's go d they were really behind him wanting him to win the match he obviously wasn't gonna win but the crowd was behind it i was behind it the match itself was great now, so there was times so yeah, of D. Brown would get his strap, get the fight, uh, the bat, get it, like, you know, he would whip the Fiend with the belt or the strap. There were also this other one time where he landed the yes kicks, and the Fiend later on just said, like, come on, and kept, like, like legit asking him for more. 
Uh, there was that. There was this other beautiful spot where D, where Daniel legit did like go went for the right knee, but Bray legit caught him in midair and, and countered it into Sister Abigail. It looked fucking amazing. It looked absolutely epic. Um, there was that. Uh, what else? Um, I remember, oh, there was also a time where D. Bryan starts, like, you know, starting to get up with the fan, where he's just, like, like, you know, he's moving, he's, like, shaking, he's, like, come on, come on, try to get high, and the Fiend gets up, and the crowd just goes dead silent, man, it was just, like, and the look on D. Bryan is he turns around and sees the Fiend standing around, and then he goes and hit him with the strap, but the, but the, but the Fiend is just no selling it, man, absolutely fantastic. He wins, the Fiend wins it with the Mandible Claw, one, two, three, and that is the end of the match. Now, what can we get for WrestleMania? We could, the, the, we're probably going to get him versus Roman Reigns. If it happens, you know, fine, whatever. Language bar. I don't hate Roman. You know, I think he's fine, but yeah, uh, I guess we'll find. Maybe he'll face off against John because he wants something substantial. Rest of me, and I wouldn't mind watching that match. But yeah, the promos between those two would also be fantastic because John's amazing on the mic. But yeah. Next up, we have the Raw Women's Women's Title match. Yes, I heard what Becky said on, on backstage. Fucking bullshit, if you ask me about it. I was like, ooh, we need to eliminate the word women. It's trying to hold us back. Nah, your shit division is what's holding you back, Becky. Not the name Women's. Because they, and then now it's going to be confused on NXT. Like, oh, Adam Cole's the NXT champion. So is Raina, Raina Rivers also the NXT champion. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. She is part of the women's division. So it's called the women's championship. But what the fuck do I know? Anyway. So the match itself was also really, really, really good. This match was also great. Really got good around the end of it. A lot of high, uh, really, really high, high uh, impact spots. Like there was this one where, um, where um, Becky legit, uh, and I also really thought the storyline for this match with Becky being like, you know, I'm like, boss is like the one person I haven't been able to beat yet. So that's why we got the match. The build itself was also really good. But um, where, uh, so, I'm not Sasha. Uh, Be Becky puts her up in a like a suplex position and legit just drops her over from from the ring apron onto the floor. Looked nasty. There was also this other one where she had like I think I don't know what it's called, but I'm just gonna call it rock bottom because that's what it looked like. She had like a rock bottom from the second rope, which also looks really good, really cool. Um, what else? Um, you know, there was a, there was t times where Oscar got the uh, Oscar lock in there, and you're like, oh, was it gonna be a repeat of last year? Is she gonna tap out? She went off the counter. Got the there's all the times where she got the uh, oh no, no, I remember now. There, one of my favorite spots in the match was uh, when um, uh, Oscar's like hitting Becky with a bunch of knees or a bunch of kicks, and then one of them manages to like pretty much almost knock Becky out. Looks like she knocked out. The ref goes check on her. He's about to stop the match, and Becky's legit holding the ref's leg like no. That was all the match. It reminded me of on NXT when Reyna won the NXT Women's Championship, and yo, know, she was grabbing the ref's shirt. She's like, "Don't you dare! Don't you if you if you ring that bell, motherfucker!" You know that like that also got me hyped. So this one was also really good. Um, so there was that one. There that that one was really cool. And she's like starts ask. I, I, I forget if it was like, but I think yeah, it was, yeah, it was Becky asked like, "Come on, hit me, hit me again with the kicks." And then she just hits her in the face, and she just goes down. That also was really cool. The, the match definitely got better at the end of the at the end of around the end of it. But anyway, Becky wins. I, I think she won with the Beck Exploder. Um, I believe so. There was this one time where Becky almost ran to the referee, and Oscar was gonna fire off the mist. But she does an inch, and Becky ends, and she ends up like kicking her, which ends up Becky or not Becky. Oscar just fires up in midair, then kind of just like lands on her face. I don't know what happened from when she spit up, but it just like a love it just got on her face, man. Which honestly, I like the image of it with all that green stuff on her face. It actually looks pretty cool, honestly. So yeah, that's about the end of the match. Becky looks at her, nods, and that's the end of the match. Before we get into the men's Royal Rumble, now the match. Now this match was built around rope with Brock Lesnar. Coming in as number one because no one else is really worthy to fight him, which is honestly true. And he was like, you know, let's just do this. Now, me, now this isn't the first time we've had something similar to this with the WWE Champion coming in number one. And we just used this to find the WrestleMania opponent. Remember, you guys remember back in 2016, they did the same thing. When Roman Reigns was WWE Champion, they had him coming in number one. And that was actually for the WWE title itself. Now, I actually, even back then, I really liked that idea with the WWE Championship being on the line in the Rumble. And I really wish they would come back to that. And I guess they kind of did. I don't know the why they didn't just go all the way with it and just have it be for the title, but whatever. So this match was also really good. Brock Lesnar came at number one. Elias was number two. He sang a little song, and, you know, there was that. 
Um, so I'm just going to kind of fast forward through this match, get through all the little bits. Uh, we also had Kofi come in there, and, you know, he, they had, like, a little bit of rematch. Rey Mysterio Kelsey came out there. He was dressed up as Batman, looked pretty cool. Biggie came in, they all kind of, like, teamed up against uh, Brock. He get, and I think Brock got, like, 13 eliminations, tying tying the record. And I say tying in, in massive air quotations there. Tying the record, but he was the first one to get, like, 13 row. This was very much similar to the 2015 Royal Rumble, where brought where Bray was constantly eliminating people, and he would just be alone in the ring for like a few times. I think it happened like two or three times that Rumble, and I remember liking it then. I also like to hear a Brock just eliminate someone. Yeah, he was pretty much burying the roster, but hey, it looked cool. Uh, some of the other cool ones was Keith Lee made an appearance, and they had an epic standoff between him and Brock. Uh, MVP made it for a turn, which I was super hyped for. I legit. While the match is going on, I legit took a picture of my screen with MVP. By the way, was dressed up as my man Kilmo. It, or he might have been coming out as T'Chaka, actually, because they both had gold in their suits, so it might have actually been T'Chaka. But anyway, he came out dressed up as like a, as you know T'Chaka or Kilmo. It's a fucking amazing man. And I legit like texted him the picture. He's just like, and I'm like, guess who's back? Because I'm super hyped because I loved MVP as a kid. And he's just like trash. I'm like. Bro, come on, MVP was awesome. He's like, nah, man, I always thought it was kind of cringy, so fuck you, Emmanuel. <laughs> but yeah, MVP came in there. He got eliminated pretty quickly, but hey, he chased around Paul Heyman a couple times, which is actually kind of funny to watch. I loved his suit, if I didn't mention it already, and yo, it was nice seeing MVP come back. That was nice. Um, Matt Riddle was also in the Rumble, but he got eliminated almost instantly by Baron Corbin. Figures. Uh, who else? Um... I don't know from NXT. No, no, no. Those are the yeah. Those are the only two NXT guys came in there. Uh, and the ma I also love the matchup between uh, Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar. Drew uh, Brock Brock legit took his gloves off and they had like their little standoff. Looked amazing. Ricochet kicks him in the balls and then brought and then. Uh, Drew hits him with the Claymore kick, and, that, and that's where it eliminates Brock Lesnar. I was excited. I was happy that WWE is finally building up someone new in Drew McIntyre. Because Drew McIntyre is one of my favorites currently. I love his moveset. I love his look. He is without a doubt the perfect pro wrestler, if you ask me. And, you know, everything he's gone through, you know, he got fired, came back, rebuilt himself on the indies, came back. And I just love, you know, what Drew has done to himself since he, uh, when we first, when the last time he left in, like, back in, like, 2014. So I'm glad to see that he got, that he's actually finally starting to get some rub because he really shouldn't have, because he should have gotten this a lot sooner, but, hey, better late, better late, better late than never, honestly. But, hey, so, yeah. Uh, what else happened? Uh, what other cruelty? Oh, of course, you know, I got to talk about the biggest thing that happened from the Rumble. The return of... <clears throat> Hold on, let me back away from the mic, because I don't want this to ruin the audio. <clears throat> the Rated R Superstar Edge! Yes, Edge came back and... Meh, your boy lost his shit. Y'all will follow me on Twitter. You know that I lost my fucking mind when Edge came back, man, man. It was so fucking high. I gotta say, the man looks like a fucking Greek god. I love the fact that he's grown out his beard a little bit than it was before with the gray hair. He looks so much more badass. I think his hair is even a lot longer than before, too. It looks super cool. And then, of course, you know, once he gets in the ring, he's spearing people left and right. Crowd's going, for, sorry. Crowd's going crazy, man. It was epic. And then when Randy came in there, he's like legit complimenting his abs and everything. Raid RKO had a little bit of a reunion, which was awesome to see, man. Obviously, Ed didn't win because I don't want to see him die against Brock Lesnar from all those fucking Germans. But yeah, man. It was nice seeing Edge again. Drew McIntyre wins the Rumble, and yeah, man, you could see the look. There was so much emotion in his face. It was very emotional. You know, there's a long time coming for him, and I'm not. And I'm just so happy to see Drew McIntyre finally get something. Finally get something important. Finally get some opportunities around here. Because like I mentioned before, he's too good for him to be wasted away like he has for like the past like year and a half. Or two years, actually, he's been around since on the main roster. And I'm glad to see he's finally getting something important. So, yeah. Edge also looked like Edge looked like he was just like, fuck me. Because you can see the look at Edge when he came out. He was just like, fuck me, man. Like, you know, when he's taking everything in. It looked amazing, man. It's just having him do it with the pyro and everything. So good. So happy to see Edge back, man. Definitely looking forward to watching Raw tonight. So, yeah, man. Drew, won Drew wins the Rumble, and that's the end of the show. So, yeah, overall, I love the Rumble. Definitely the best one we've gotten in some time. And overall, I give the Royal Rumble this year a 9 out of 10, guys. So if you, I would definitely recommend you guys check, check the pay-per-view out if you didn't already. If you skipped it, definitely worth your time. If you ask me, or at the very least, the Rumble matches. Excuse me. 
So yeah, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Oh, and also, by the way, guys, tell me down below what you guys thought of peer review. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Love it. Then what you guys saw of it. So yeah, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, flag. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.